give thanks, give thanks, give thanks and praise to the mystic laws of the universe and to the equity functions and forces in nature that guide our thoughts and our paths and our ways that are lawful, correct, and positive. We do give thanks and praise. Give thanks and praise. Always. Yeah, always. The most of creator of nature, our great spirit. Yeah. Oh God, be the glory. Same way. Same way. Yeah, man. Again, state administration. Administrative Procedure Act. Share the document here out there. But again, I like it, so I'm going to take time, touch a few lines, and you know, just do it in as usual. It's the agencies or governmental entities which, although they affect the rights and duties of persons. When you say a word like that, persons, it can carry a legal meaning. So it's a, you call it a word of art or a term of art, that persons. Yeah, it can, you can ascribe it to the juristic entity. Yeah. Are neither courts nor legislator nor executive. So it's the agency. All agencies are governmental entities which, although they affect the rights and duty of persons, are neither courts, which is judicial, nor legislators, nor executive. So agency is outside that specific. It has a group. First, all agencies are created by legislation. Every agency has some set of statutes duly passed by a legislator that defines its mission, organization, and jurisdiction. We can look at the Jamaica documents, Jamaica Constitution um, order. 1961, you can see a lot of the information here. Second, all agencies are shaped roughly like a pyramid with some person or group of persons at the top. His, her, or their immediate staff below and then down through the ranks of their subordinates and other employees of the agency. I remember, I know, the government of Jamaica. is, in fact, an agency. And when my summary nouns, my association, meaning that citizenship from this agency, then I'm outside of this corporate body politic known as the government of Jamaica, which is an agency. Third, agencies share a unified mission which is defined by the legislation that creates the agency and is expressed in the most immediate sense by the person or persons who head the agency. Better about a corporation or a company or, you know, Something abstract, basically. Yeah. And the agency, as you look, are going to be separate and distinct from the law. The agency can investigate potential violation of the law within their jurisdiction. So you have to be within their jurisdiction. 
for them to even have any kind of, you know, authority or control. That's what jurisdiction is. They may make use of full range of investigative tools, including its inspections, tests, record keeping, and reporting requirements, and others. If agency personnel detect violation of the law, which law? Administrative law, which is separate and distinct from constitutional law, which is the supreme law of the land, which is in line with common law. So when it's a law right here, they are, it's state administrative procedural act. So it has to be administrative law, which is commercial in nature. So this is why we say silent deception and inducement by constructive fraud. Because there is no full disclosure. This is why a senior sergeant of police from the Greater Portmore Police Station would arbitrarily make a legal determination on the roadside when he cannot read and write properly. Not say he cannot read and write entirely. He cannot read and write properly. So when he chooses to make a legal determination arbitrarily, Sisma Automobile Private falsely arrest me and imprison me. And in order to get out of prison, I had to sign a recognizance bond under coercion, threaten the rest. So this is basically, you know, that story. And it's all due to this agency. Yeah, man. And it's agents acting beyond the scope of their authority. So if I'm in my automobile, which is outside of your registered commercial venue or arena, then I'm just outside your area. I can't literally fly and go to Mars and say, hey, I'm, you know, no, I'm demonstrating that by giving your documentation, showing it's a here, and because he doesn't read and write properly, you choose to break the law. Yeah, man, by forcefully kidnapping me and stole my automobile. And all. no, we're not talking about compensating me. But uh, the law states, uh, whenever compulsory take my vehicle, my automobile, my private property, my personal property, if you consider the hardship way that it cost me, you understand? And then when you carry my thing and place it in that tow, tow, tow area, pound, in pound, whatever that is, where we hear all the stories about those locations. And I'm quite sure my automobile is not the same. Yeah, man, I'm quite sure I'm going to have a hard time finding, you know, my properties. Last time this agency stole my automobile, they stole my vehicle of my vehicle, which was my private vehicle. The government of Jamaica stole that. They stole my, my keys. I never get back my keys. So I have to go see what's going on when I do go forward. Come, I have to get an inspection of my automobile. I don't need an inspection. I don't need them to bring it forward to the courthouse so I can get inspected. Anyway, if agency personnel detect violation of the law, they may be able to take legal action in a manner parallel to that of a prosecutor. Hear that? Because it's an administrative adjudication. You know what I mean? 
not a judicial or court adjudication, then the agency can take legal action in a manner only parallel to that of a prosecutor. So they are not really a prosecutor. Inquisitor. Agency may also be responsible for development of legal standards, much like legislation. So their legal standards are not legislations. These standards are known alternatively as rules or regulations. So when you say rules or regulations, know their legal standards of the governmental agency. I'm saying it clear as day right here. This is these people's manual, my people. Yeah, man. I'm sure we kind of slow around here. We we'll just take our time getting there. I wouldn't mind share while we go along. Using a formal process that requires publishing notice of the proposed rulemaking in the state register, agencies, after taking public comment and following other legal required steps, may adopt rules that may be filed with the Secretary of State. This, the, this is the mainland. published in the state registry and eventually assembled in the official compilation of code rules and regulation of the state, any state. This latter publication is broken down into various volumes and is often abbreviated. Yeah? Agencies also make less formal and binding pronouncement in handbooks, memoranda, orders, and other guidance documents. This is the operation of the agencies. Agencies are responsible for conducting administrative adjudications. That are the so we need a term for them. So when we have supports, it's just an administrative proceedings. You know what I mean? Yeah. In terms of the impact upon the lives of the persons involved, administrative adjudication can be very every bit as important, critical, and profound as court adjudication. So here is a distinction, my people. Well, most of the people have know these things, but my basic people were just have come forward. We are grassroots, so we just are learning. So we're not going to end up in a law school, so we are forget, you know? Yeah. Do we, they are not orthodox way. Yeah, we just going to get that manual, get that blueprint, and work from there, step by step. Agents. All right. I'm going to give you an example. I'm so the grocer facing loss of a license to sell beer. The company faced with a potential fine for violating an applicable environmental standard. Always some standard. The disabled person attempting to obtain vocational services, each must appear before an agency in an administrative adjudication in which the stakes are personally quite high, I can tell you. While administrative adjudication shares some important features with court adjudication, there are important differences as well. One, court adjudication begins before a judge who is constitutionally independent from other branches of government. Number two, administrative adjudication typically begins before an agency 
employee with the title of administrative law judge, which is a title, hearing officer, which is another title, hearing examiner, which is another title, you can say resident magistrate is another title, or you can say parish court judge is just another title. Yeah, man. But we'll use administrative law judge. Or we can use hearing officer. Yeah. You're not judge until you demonstrate so you're in honor and you're you're patient with you know adverse witness and you know you inform the witness of the cause of his presence. Yeah, you know, just run him out or plead guilty or not guilty. All that is out of order. Right there, you yeah, show bias when even your administrative oath dictate it should be fair and impartial in your direction of, you know, your little duty that you have just as an umpire. But because of this conflict of interest where everybody benefiting from the juristic entity, that surety. I want to know what is going to happen to my $100,000 bond that I put up. I'm hoping you guys will place it in my NIB account. $100,000 bond. That's my surety. Yeah, because I ain't hiding or disappearing or I'm not fleeing the island. <laughs> not for no misdemeanor criminal traffic case. Yeah, paradox. Yeah, I'm on. Something different around here because I guess nobody never do it before and even when we step out here before. And so let me settle this and move on. Apparently, it's, it wasn't settled. So we're not going to mind or share all kind of information to see how best we can move forward. And in the process, if the house burned down, then so be it. Not our intention. We never come here voluntarily. While hearing officer have a legal duty to consider impartially the merits of adjudication, they are not separated from the agency in the same way that judges are separated from the rest of government. Some of them will call them administrative law judges, they will call them hearing officer or hearing examiner. That's more appropriate. Yeah, man. And them proper and respectful, then we give them some respect and style them up and say, judge and honorable. But when them is rude and cool, then you deal with them accordingly. Yeah, right there, you know, so them are sodomize you. Right there, you know, them are, you know, put you in a place where you don't have no right whatsoever. Them just arbitrarily take that from you. And now that is why you say, say boy, here's partiality. You're working for the foreign bankers when you act that way. You're saying, I'm a slave when you act that way. And we have to rebut any one of those presumptions and we have to offer you object and we have to offer you subpoena Officer, uh, we discover say uh, there is so much things that we can't get done here, and we're going to take our time. <laughs> yeah, man, we're gonna object to your proceedings only because it's out of order, it's unlawful. Yeah, man, I will object 
to that agency employee impersonating court prosecutor. That's why I don't look so raggedy. That's why I don't look so out of place. Yeah, man. It's only the hearing officer. Yeah. Really smooth, you know, but she really animated by that energy that yeah, man. <laughs> While judges in court adjudication hear a large variety of cases, hearing officers consider a much narrower range of matters. This is in large part because the creation of an agency reflects a legislative judgment that enforcement and interpretation of law in that field would benefit from technical expertise. So now we are talking about technical expertise, we are talking about technical languages. You understand? This is when we say, boy, these words have legal definitions. Yeah, when you look up the word persons legally, it's totally different from what you would think it is ordinarily. This is why we direct people to so check with the legal lexions, the legal dictionaries. Check with the etymological lexions and dictionaries, and then you work with the ordinary. There's more than enough time, you know what I mean? Yeah, just be patient in your approach. Yeah, man, and it's a step-by-step -step process all the way. So we can only move step-by-step -step in righteousness and in truth. Cool and brave out here. Yeah, man, firm and strong out here. Yeah, man, righteousness. Shall love on the earth. Truly. With humility. Yeah, man. Whether the field is health, environment, taxation, workers' compensation, rent control, or some other field in which an agency has jurisdiction. So in everything, in everything, the agency must prove jurisdiction in order to move forward, in order to act. Mafia have jurisdiction, and then you know, jurisdiction break down into different, different areas. You know what I mean? Yeah, we're not going to touch on that now. We're just going to touch with this. These matters are committed to administrative, not court adjudication, precisely so that matters can be determined by agency employees who are. Experts, supposedly. However, for some reason, from 2019 till now, them can't get it right. <laughs> oh, as ex as expert as they are, you get me. Say the either not expert and know what is right and know what is lawful, which is separate and distinct from what is administrative. Legal. Again, administratively legal. So constitutionally lawful versus administrative legality. Now we are get down to the nitty gritty with specific say. Full argument is it? Yeah, man, with him list on. <laughs> Lightning out there, earthquake, and thunder, for no mad behavior. Yeah, man, rise to the occasion. It's a free will exercise. Yeah, man. The hearing officer, by hearing a relatively narrow range of cases, have an opportunity to become expert in a manner that 
judges here in court adjudications cannot do the case. Yeah, man. So this is just information where we just a touch upon and make sure we get ourselves up to par, you know. The relative lack of physical separation of administ administrative law judges or hearing officers from agencies also allow hearing officers to take advantage of the technical expertise of other agency personnel. So I can talk to other people. While the hearing officers, like courts, are generally not allowed to consult off the record about the specific facts of the case, they are entitled to get informal advice on matters of law and policy from other agency personnel subject to the restriction that those other agency personnel not be the very personnel presenting the agency's case to the hearing officer. Administrative law tolerate this sort of informal consultation because, again, agencies have expertise. And all facets of the agency's expertise should permeate all aspects of the agency's activities, including administrative adjudication. Yes, sir. I give thanks, people. Give thanks. We are going to flow a little bit more. Source of legal obligation of agencies, the Constitution, that's always the supreme law. That's the source of their authority. Agency, of course, must follow the law, constitutional law, not administrative law. To the extent that agencies overstep legal boundaries, now courts have the authority to set aside the agency action. There are many sources of legal obligation on agency. But by way of overview, there are three principal sources of legal restraint on agency. I'll go back to due process and you know, touch upon a lot of them. So I'll touch back upon some of these things, you know, later. You know, we always I try to catch up with, you know, what is. So when we have the manual, we can get a better. You know, comprehension of what I want. So when them say hearing, adjudicatory proceedings, that's really the hearing. Adjudicatory proceeding. So you have record keeping, presiding officer, power of presiding officer, disclosure, evidence, decision, determination, and order. And then to break down everything. So all of these things, we can touch upon the next day. You know? And we just take time to read from a bridge when them were too tired and now have no time for you to read, read, read. And for some of the ones them were not really read, read, read. I'm okay now listen, 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 and forgive the errors when we butcher some of these words. Uh, again, we are that work in progress. Surely, self taught, auto didactic. Some say auto didactic. Self taught. So, with us, I take our time, you know, step by step. But there's a lot of information I remember, you know. <laughs> yeah, we're not. Train attorney, and you know, when I go can pay these attorneys for any kind of aid around here. And then again, any attorney come near where the judge probably does, you know, really put them to shame to uh, you know how these things are. So we have to find what we as man, stand up as man. Notice none of these documents talk about the man or the woman, it's all about person. Or persons. The beauty about it within these documents, it usually gives you the definition, the meaning of the words being used. Yeah, man. 
Well, all we have to do is just take the time out there. Eh? And again, there's always knowledge over ignorance. Yeah, man. Always knowledge over ignorance. He said the brave may fall, but never yield. He said bold and brave. Firm and strong. Yeah, man. I will walk in the animation. This is who we are. By choice. Yeah, man. Every man have the right to decide his own destiny. Yeah, every man have the right to self-identification. According to UN Charter. Every man have that right to self-determination. Yeah, man. Whether group or individual. But any group have to start as individual. This is why I tell every man, stand up as a free man individually. Then we all can come together collectively as free man and woman making our stand. We have to choose to be free. And when them challenge we, we have to choose never to submit. Never ever to submit. Yeah, man. What we have to do is try to apply ourselves. But actually, we don't know. We have to look and I try to learn and bring it forward to our people where I look with we. And I try to learn with we. So we can raise to our next level. We have to. It's imperative. Yeah, man. Salute on stage TV out there. Come on, is it? Sometimes he's a man tear up the ones then. Word to the wise, that platform there. Yeah, man. Salute out there. Yeah, man. Oh, how what great spirit. Whose voice I hear in the wind, and whose breath give life to all the earth. Here I, I am small and weak, and need strength and wiseness. Let me walk in peace, beauty. May the beauty of my eyes ever be on the red and purple sunset. Make my hands. Respect the things you have made and make my ear sharp enough to hear your voice. Make me wise so I may totally comprehend the things you have taught my ancestors. Let me learn the lessons you have hidden in every leaf and rock. I seek strength. Not to be greater than my brother, but to fight my greatest enemy, that ego self. Make me always willing to come to you with clean hands, pure heart, and straight eyes. So when life feed as a feeling sunset, part my soul will come to you without shame. Give thanks and praise. Give thanks and praise. Give thanks and praise. No, 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 We do give thanks and praise. Light men out there. Smooth the wicked. Like island water out there, man. And then earthquake, lightning, and thunder. And then, according to you, how thou most art, according to you, search them, search them. And when you find them wanting, heal them, yeah, man, and then you can seal them. And he can give thanks and praise. Salute, free people. Out there. Capital. Capital. Gog. Of me, Gog. Those foreign people from the north. We not forget about you. 
Yeah, man. On a totally dominate that North American area. We don't forget about you. We don't forget about you. Old Gog. Yeah, man. Me a Gog. You people from the North. Right now.